Hello, have you ever wondered how to solve a boundary value problem? What? Problem? Well, they did. Why? Well, because there was no Facebook, Twitter or WhatsApp, so one thing led to another, you know. Okay, so first things first. What is a differential equation? Ah! Nah, we don't do that. For those too shy to admit that they don't know what it is, check it here. Mm, well, not there, please. Okay, once we know what a differential equation is, a boundary value problem is an ordinary or partial differential equation along with a set of additional restraints called boundary conditions. Boundary conditions are specified at the extremes of the independent variable in the equation. Please welcome our mathematicians. <laughs> Peter Dirichlet, he was German, born in 1805 and died in 1859. Karl Newman, also German, born in 1832 and died in 1925, and Victor Robin, French, who was born in 1855 and died in 1897. Okay, so to start with Dirichlet. Dirichlet established the first boundary conditions. Okay, let's say we have an ordinary differential equation, where y secondus plus y equals zero. The Dirichlet boundary conditions on a given interval a, b, take the form of y of a equals alpha, and y of b equals beta. And then with a partial differential equation. Laplace equation of y times y plus y equals zero. Dirichlet boundary conditions on a domain omega contained in Rn take the form of yx equals f of x for every x contained in the domain of omega. The Neumann process is as Dirichlet's, but the boundary conditions are set by the derivatives, where the differential of y over n of x equals f of x for every x contained in the differential of omega, where n is the normal to the boundary differential of omega, and f is a given scalar function. The normal derivative above is defined by the differential of y over n of x equals the gradient of y of x inner product n of x. Robin boundary conditions or linear boundary conditions or impedance boundary conditions or third type boundary conditions are all the same. Robin presented a weighted combination of Dirichlet's and Neumann's boundary conditions. If omega is the domain on which the given equation is to be solved, and the domain omega, the boundary, Robin conditions are AU plus B differential of U over N equals G on the derivative of omega, where A and B are constants different to zero. G is a function defined on the domain and U our unknown solution. A and B can also be functions instead of constants. For instance, for omega, between 0 and 1, we would have au of 0 minus bu prime of 0 equals g of 0. And au of 1 plus bu prime of 1 equals g of 1. It is important not to confuse Robin boundary conditions and mixed boundary conditions. Robins are a linear combination of Dirichlet's and Neumann's that apply to all the boundary, while mixed is part of the boundary of one type and the rest of the other type. The Richlet boundary condition is applied in several areas within engineering. In mechanical in engineering for the beam theory, where one end of the beam is held at a fixed position in space. In thermodynamics, where a surface is held at a fixed temperature. In electrostatics, where a node of a circuit is held at a fixed voltage. In fluid dynamics, the no-slip condition for viscous fluid states that the solid boundary, the fluid will have zero velocity relative to the boundary. Neumann boundary condition is applied in thermodynamics, where a surface has a prescribed heat flux, such as a perfect insulator, where a flux is zero, or an electrical component dissipating a known power. Robin boundary conditions are also called impedance boundary conditions, from their application in electromagnetic problems. 
Let's do something useful with all these methods. For example, counting pigeons. For Dirichlet, it's very useful, the pigeonhole principle, which states that if we have a number of n stored pigeons in m pigeonholes, where m is smaller than n, by force there must be at least one pigeonhole containing several pigeons. Okay, an example of this says that there are two people in the world who have exactly the same number of hairs on their heads. In fact, I'm sure we can find many more than 1,000 people with the same number of hairs on their heads as you have. So to solve this, we, uh, we follow the pigeonhole principle. Pigeons are going to be humanity for this example, and pigeonholes the number of hairs on their head. But how many hairs can a ha have? How many hairs can a person have in mind? If we go to Wikipedia, an adult may have about a million hairs on their heads, but counting beard, nose, ears, and almost invisible fluff and such. If we stay with the scalp, there are between 100,000 and 150,000. Well, without falling short, let's consider someone a super hairy. So we would say that that person can have up to a million hairs on the scalp. The number of hairs could vary from zero to a million. And in these pigeonholes, we have to put the six million current inhabitants of the Earth. Although we have grown a little bit, as Google says, we are 6,775 million. Well, applying the pigeonhole principle, we should indeed have at least 6,775 people with exactly the same numbers of hair. Some may say this was obvious, because there are many bald people without hair on their heads. Well, since the total number of bald people in the world must be very high, we could not have done the same reasoning considering only people who have head hair. And we would also have got to a similar conclusion for people with hair. Let's do something more formal for Neumanns. Having this domain, we will solve the following equation, equipped with a Neumann boundary condition. On the outer boundary, here, C flux is a constant prescribed heat flux value. Recall that C flux equals zero means a perfect insulated wall. On the boundary parts, bottom, left, and inner, we keep the non-constant Dirichlet condition. Since the solution on the outer boundary is unknown, the test functions are non-zero there, and thus the weak formulation is the following. Using the Neumann condition, we obtain that this weak formulation we will be solved through Dirichlet and Neumanns, but we simplified it for the video. The output for the following parameters is shown below.